Hello and welcome to Nemo's Views. I was on Twitter, pardon me, X this morning and uh, I saw a trending hashtag. Uh, it was all about disgusting, hashtag disgusting. So I thought, oh, what could be what could be so disgusting to be trending? And it came up with a, tw a tweet. I'm not going to name the person who, who wrote the tweet. And it goes, Gaze, it's a abomination to God. You have a problem with the Most High, not me. You a disgusting to God. Clearly a well-written text there. A well-written tweet, I should say. And then he goes on to get a screenshot of Leviticus 18.22. Uh, which has been translated in common English versions as Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind, it is abomination. Not an abomination, just abomination. You shall not lie with a male as with a woman, it is an abomination. You shall not lie with a male as with a woman, such a thing is an abomination. So they think it's an abomination then. Some book that was written apparently 2,000 years ago, whatever, uh, says, so that's what we must all do. Um, so what I'm getting is, God apparently doesn't like gays. God doesn't like your gays, which means all you religious folk out there have to hate the gays as well. And I've never understood, I've never understood this whole attitude towards gay people. Um, if you've got a man that loves another man, and that man loves him back, then it's fine. If you've got a woman that loves another woman, and that woman loves her back, it's fine. I don't understand what the big deal is, why it's such a problem for these religionistas to accept love. Whether it's, and they say, oh, it's Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Who cares? I mean, if you'd go back to the very beginning of the Bible anyway, Adam and Eve weren't married before they start having, had in, having relations, you know, um, and yet and yet they did. And then, of course, the whole the whole thing was was built on incest because it was only Adam and Eve and then their children. Um, if, if you read into it um, now, what I don't understand is you've got God. Now, if you believe in God. You believe that he is this omnipotent creator of the heavens and the earth and everything in it and all the things in between. And God is the man and he can do no wrong because God is perfect and everything that God wants, God gets, which is fine. Um, God is this omnipotent super being. He is God. Right now. We apparently are created in God's image. So we are, you know, arms, legs, ears, nose, we're created in God's image. So that would stand to reason that God is sort of human shaped or we are God shaped, whichever way you want to look at it. And it stands to reason that, you know, God, there must be a Mrs. God, I suppose. I don't know. But what I can't get my head around is God has created us in his image, which is fine. I'm on board with that. God has made it possible for us to do these things, which is fine. He's made it possible for us to either accept or deny the existence of God, which is fine. Um, you know, I'm on board with that so far. But then he's created, he's given man, we'll say man, man and women, but he's given mankind the the possibility to be gay or lesbian, right? So... But he doesn't like gays and lesbians. But he still made them. Surely that is a bit like cooking your dinner and putting something you don't like on your plate. It's like making your dinner and thinking, oh, I can't stand broccoli. I think I'll put some on my plate because I just really can't stand it. I've got the option to leave it and miss it. But no, I can't stand broccoli. So I'm going to ruin my dinner with broccoli on the plate. I can't stand it, but I'm going to put it on anyway. I'm going to add it in. God making people and allowing them to be gay 
Surely, if he hates them that much, it's exactly like the broccoli analogy. You know, I just, I just, I don't understand it. I genuinely don't understand it. If God didn't like your gays, he didn't have to have them in. Because after all, it's his world. He made it. He designed it. He created everything in between. He created the animals and the water and the sea and the sky and the mountains and the grass and the trees and, you know. And then he's thought, oh, what can I do now to really, really ruin it? Oh, I know, I'll make it so men can like men. That's what I'll do. That'll really ruin it. And then I can just be bitter about it forever and ever. Even though I've got the option now to just bypass that and just make it so that it will only be men and women. I could I could totally do that because I'm God, but no, no, I won't. It's It's nonsense to say... The, the, you know, I mean, I've read into it once. I mean, I know plenty of gay people. I know plenty of lesbian, gay blokes and lesbian women. And, you know, they're just regular run-of-the-mill people that just happen to like the same the same gender. They happen to either like men or women or whatever. Um, you know, they're just regular run-of-the-mill people. Everybody deserves love and to be loved in return. But somehow your religionistas can't get through, can't get past that. They can't get past it. And I don't understand why. It's, it just boggles my mind that, A, something that's not to do with you anyway, um, would, would cause you such an issue. I don't get it. If you don't like something, leave it alone. Just move past it. I don't, I don't get why they're so, why your religionistas are so bent out of shape about it i really don't understand it just live and let live do as the rest of your imaginary guidebook says and just love love your brothers and sisters and get on with it that's basically the gist of the bible but for some reason their little made-up guidebook seems to shape everything they they believe in so there we go what can you do you you know when they're that far gone you can't change them so that is uh, that is my view, such as it is. If you've stuck with it this far, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.